The Fishing Paper Show is proudly brought to you by United Fisheries, bringing fresh fish to your plate. There's something special about salmon, wild salmon in particular. It's a Kiwi thing. There's a thrill in targeting them and certainly a big thrill when you catch one. Something uniquely Kiwi too is smoking and the two go hand in hand together. It's the ultimate in smoked fish, smoked salmon. Now the secret to getting the most out of your salmon is drawing the flavours out. So I've created a brine mixture simply with salt and cold water, a couple of tablespoons of salt to a litre or two of water and you don't need to soak the fillets overnight or for any long period of time about 20 to 40 minutes is enough you're really only limited by your imagination when it comes to adding flavour to your smoked fish not everybody likes uh, additives on it some people prefer just the pure salmon what I found works really well is instead of brown sugar I like to drizzle some runny honey just give a nice thin layer over each fillet and on top of that, I'll put whatever flavouring I have a hankering for. Today I'm going to try something a little bit different. Just for texture I'm going to put on some poppy seeds, just to give it a bit of a, a different look. And some nutmeg. Goes well with fish. So you only need a hint, because it's quite a strong spice. So just a little bit of hint of nutmeg on that one. And on the second fillet, just because we like a little bit of variety, something else that goes well with fish is paprika. It's really that simple. You can put on it whatever you like, chilli flakes, curry. Curry is one that works really, really well. Have fun with your smoking. Experiment with different flavours. That's the whole joy of it. Now it's just a case of onto the smoking rack and away to the smoker. Tastes good, smelt good, looked good. It's keeping on the theme of salmon, Steve Terry from Fish and Game talking about uh, salmon enhancers, one of the things that you do. We've got some field footage here. Steve, I, I want you to talk us through what you're doing here. Okay. This is uh, wild salmon in the wild, a pair of salmon in a head high country spring creek, just a typical pristine spawning stream that uh, the salmon head from the ocean. Uh, often the salmon return to hatcheries that have been released from, and, and we uh, gather those salmon and take them up to various high country streams if we don't need them at our hatchery for our own purposes and we release them. Um, they go on to spawn in those streams and help, help increase the population. These look like quite large salmon. How old would they be coming back from sea? A uh, majority of salmon are three years old. I think it's 80 odd percent of them that return to the, the rivers are three years of age. Um, they, when we transport them we have to add a lot of oxygen so we can put quite a few fish in the tankers there and they get a little bit higher on oxygen as you can tell they they go they go for a bit of a recovery stage on the on the dry so they they come around after a minute or two but, uh, now we, when these are released back to these streams these high country streams they naturally go about their spawning uninterrupted they naturally go straight into it um, often these are only a, a number of days away from uh, from spawning and then they'll probably only survive for a couple of weeks after that and they'll die a natural death. And yeah, that's part, of the, that's part of the salmon life cycle isn't it? Once they come back to the river that's the end of their life. That's right. The, um, they, when they come back they, do, they gather and find their partner and do their thing and that's it. 
um, and then the, the new ones hang around in the in the river for up to a year and they head out to sea for a couple of years and return again. Now these fish that you're releasing here, they look too small to be salmon. They're uh, a combination of trout and salmon in there. This uh, electric fishing machine I talked to you about, this is a salvage operation we did on an uh, irrigation raceway and just returning the, river, uh, the fish back to the river. So. Okay, so that's um, when you talk about salvage operations, you're taking fish that are under threat from other waterways. Uh, fish that enter irrigation raceways or unscreened water takes, we have to go and uh, basically use this machine and recover them from the raceways without any harm, and then release them back into the water body they came from. So oh, that'd be quite an exciting job, wouldn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, um, it's you certainly get to see a lot of different species and get to see some nice places in the countryside, so out and about. All right. And speaking of lovely places, I was in Fiordland earlier in the year, and this is where the pick of the week was taken. Here we have Simon Meacham with two lovely crays that he took free diving. Awesome spot. If you ever get the opportunity, I recommend you go to Fiordland. OK, now just about time to wrap it up before we go. Uh, What's coming up in uh, the Fish and Game calendar? Uh, I've got the opening of the High Country Lakes in North Canterbury. The 6th of November is a Saturday and we've got a quite a big fishing competition at Lake Coleridge. That, uh, thanks to you <laughs> and yourself there. Yeah, and yeah. uh, it's going to be a fantastic event. Um, we've got over $10,000 worth of prizes. And that's complements of uh, Hamels and Composite Development. So it's going to be a fantastic day. I look forward to it. And we'll be there, the Fishing Paper will be there at the competition. Now don't forget to come back next week and join us here on the Fishing Paper Show when we have more Fishing Madness and Mayhem. Catch you then.